Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Okay, today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, so for this video, okay, I'm going to emphasize on the various EMC immunity tests. So over here, you can see that there are actually five such immunity tests. Okay, you can see that they actually run in a sequence. Like for example, this ESD, which is governed by 61000-4-2. Over here, you can see that this is actually 4-3, okay, which is for the radiate immunity. As for EFT, okay, they will be dash 4 dash 4 search will be under dash 4 dash 5 and ci okay conducted immunity will be under this dash 4 dash 6 standard okay so over here okay i will do a quick discussion okay on all the various immunity tests okay so later on okay in fact i have done some of the discussion okay so i have done in detailed discussion on esd okay so later on okay on the few series discussion i will go in depth on all these immunity tests in deep detail discussion. Okay, so this will be the part 62 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, okay, you can always welcome to take a look on the playlist okay, under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, Okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, okay, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me through the comment. Okay, before I continue, okay, I like to urge you guys okay, to keep this in mind. Okay, if this video is helpful, okay, please, please remember to like this video later on. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let me quickly define what are EMC immunity tests. What are the different forms of EMC immunity tests? Okay, so EMC immunity tests, in fact, they involve okay, electromagnetic phenomenon to your product. Okay, you can actually think of this as the opposite of emission testing. Okay, for emission testing, what we do is basically we measure okay, what will be the electromagnetic that will be emit by our product. As for immunity testing, okay, we are actually subject our product okay, to this EM wave testing. Okay, so basically, this is the understanding okay, what is immunity test. So in short, for emission, we measure what will be emit up from our product. As for immunity, we actually bombard our device okay, with RF, for example, all the EM wave, okay, and then later on you realize that we want to determine whether our product can still function in a satisfactory manner. Okay, so under this immunity test, we have continuous and we have this transient EMC phenomenon. Okay, among the various EMC immunity tests, okay, some involve continuous, okay, which is usually modulated wave. Okay, so over here you can see that this is a form of modulated wave, while others involve a very short burst. Okay, so this is ESD. You can see over here is a very short burst, okay, which is known as transient phenomenon. Okay, the continuous tests are applied to your product over an extended period of time, ranging from minutes to hours. Okay, in contrast, transients actually occur in a matter of microsecond. So in short, we actually stress our product under two form one is basically under the continuous okay for continuous okay the test can be in term of minute or maybe very rare in term of hour as for transient okay typically the time is about microsecond a very short burst to test our dut okay so let's quickly understand what is esd okay electro static discharge okay which is under this iec or en 61000-4-2 okay you know that this little zap that you feel when you actually step out of your car and when you actually touch any conductive material okay you actually have some form of zap okay that is what we call a electrostatic discharge okay your body okay or maybe the car chassis they actually accumulate a large voltage 
Okay, which means that they have a huge potential difference. Okay, either your body or the car chassis. And so therefore, when you actually touch the car, the high voltage differentiate actually cause a spark to up between you and the car. So basically, you can imagine that there is a huge potential difference between your yourself and also your car. Okay, either one actually accumulate a large amount of charge. And because of this, okay, you actually create an arc. Okay, either to to the to you to the car or car to you. Okay, the ESD testing involves applying electrostatic discharge to any part of your product that is normally assessed to human touch. So basically, any DUT, for example, okay, we will probably need to handle it. So this ESD is like emanate like our human touch to the product when we actually discharge okay, our so-called static to the DUT. And we want to see whether our DUT can still function or not. Okay, so this is actually under ESD. Okay, so next will be under this radiate immunity. Okay, so for radiate immunity is actually governed by this standard IEC KEN six one triple zero dash four dash three. Okay, the theory behind the radiate immunity test is that your device will encounter various type of electric field disturbance during normal usage. So imagine you design any electronic product when you actually bring them to life, okay, they actually will be subject to various types of electric field disturbance. Okay, for example, you have all the 5G signal in the air. We also have the Bluetooth signal, LPN signal, etc. So all this can be a disturbance to your DUT. Okay, so as mentioned here, okay, for example, someone might use a cellular phone next to it or operate a motor nearby. Okay, so these are potential so-called noise that couple over through the air, and therefore we classify this as radiate immunity. Okay, there are many sources of electric field that may interact with your device. Okay, this test is designed to assess how well your product performs when subject to an electric field of a specific amplitude. Okay, what we actually do is basically we measure in terms of volt per meter, for example, 3 volt per meter or 10 volt per meter across a range of frequency. Okay, so this is a simple introduction on radiate immunity. Okay, during this test, okay, your equipment will be subject to a uniform electric field. Okay, so the test lab has calibrated the field at several points okay, around the test area where your product will be positioned. Okay, so later on, I will explain this. I mean, not really later on, but on the next few video, I will, I will do a detailed discussion on this uniform electric field. Okay, the field is generated as following. Okay, a signal generator, okay, which is a SIG gen, fit a modulated SIG sine wave into a Bob band RF power amplifier. Okay, so in short, we generate a sine wave. Okay, the power amplifier actually blows up the signal. Okay, this is what I mean. The output of the amplifier is then connected to a transient, okay, which is the antenna, okay, which convert the varying conductor voltage into a varying radiate electric field. Okay, typically, the field is modulated at 80% okay, with a 1 kHz of sine wave. However, for some standard, okay, the modulation frequency and depth may differ. Okay, so this is a simple introduction on radiate immunity. Okay, next on EFT, okay, electrical fast transient. Okay, so this immunity test okay, simulate the effect of a switching inductive load in real world scenario. Okay, here are a few examples of inductive load switching okay, that could potentially affect our DUT. Okay, toggling an electric switch nearby. Okay, so we, we actually purposely do some uh, toggling okay, on the switch that's nearby. Capacitive couple disturbance in bundled cable from switch load to other cables. Okay, the motor and relay and also some of the fluorescent lamps. Okay, the ballast. Okay, so basically this is for under this EFT. Okay, EFT is a transient EMC immunity test. They actually characterized by a very rapid disturbance. Okay, to the right okay, is an example of an EFT pulse. Okay, for this particular pulse, the voltage rise time is approximate 5 nanoseconds okay, with a pulse width of around 50 nanoseconds. So basically, you can see that it's a very short pulse. 
and this actually become a disturbance to your duty. And again, okay, after with this disturbance, okay, you like to see whether your DOT can function the test and not. Okay, the test involves several bursts, okay, not only one burst, but several bursts of this pulse okay, with a delay in between the bursts. Okay, the length of the burst, the frequency of the pulse, and the delay between the bursts vary according to the different standard. Okay, like I mentioned earlier on, Okay, so on my next few video, okay, I will have an in-depth discussion on this EFT. Here, you can see a couple of the most common configuration. Okay, so these are all the so-called the common one. Okay, for this EFT. Okay, so before I continue, guys, okay, if this video really help you to understand quickly on immunity tests, okay, please help this channel by like this video. Okay, when more of you guys actually like this video. Okay, so this video will have a higher chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, help me press the like button now. Again, okay, I like to enforce this. Okay, if you learn something, okay, please help this channel to subscribe. Thank you. Okay, so next will be on a search, okay, which is governed by this IEC EN61000-4-5. Okay, the search immunity test is designed Okay, to simulate low frequency power search. Okay, so this is a search. You know that our supply may not be constant. Okay, you may subject to have some form of search, maybe some form of dip also. So these are a few example of scenario. Okay, where search event might occur. Okay, the power switching event. Okay, so we we for example imagine we switch from one power source to another power source. This may cause some search. Insulation fault on the power grid, nearby switching of reactive load, okay, the fuse bro, nearby lightning strike. So basically, these are our so-called temporary search. Okay, a typical product plug into a resident AC power socket can expected to experience up to three search of six kV per year. Okay, maybe in Singapore, okay, uh, we are quite fortunate. Okay, our power supply are quite stable. Okay, I don't think we have this kind of search okay, in every year, but um, maybe some other area okay, potentially has some form of search. Last but not least, on the conductor immunity, okay, which is governed by this standard IEC EN61000-4-6. Okay, the conductor immunity testing is used to simulate the normal voltage and current environment of external power and signal cable. Okay, when cable are bundled together, okay, they can experience both capacitive and inductive coupling. Okay, so when the cable are very close together, okay, either capacitive or inductive, or in fact both can actually occur. Okay, this testing simulate adjacent cabling okay, by injecting a common mode disturbance into the cable using a transient. Okay, so imagine okay, you actually send some signal this signal actually coupled onto the cable and this signal actually travel towards your DUT and you can see whether your DUT still can function normally or not. Or at least, okay, some, some extreme case, you actually allow your DUT to fail, but it must be able to reset on its own. Okay, the conductor immunity testing is used to simulate the normal voltage and current environment of external power and signal cable. Okay, so whatever cable that is actually linked to your DUT, whether is it power, okay, or for example, some signaling, okay, you can actually inject the disturbance okay, through this coil and then couple over to the cable. Okay, so when cables are all bundled together, okay, they can exhibit both. This is what I mentioned earlier on. So we actually can inject a common mode disturbance into the cable okay, using a transient. Okay, so Hopefully with this, okay, I have done a quick introduction on the five types of immunity. Okay, so with this, i like to end my discussion. Okay, please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you.